What are canary deployments? What do they have to do with Kubernetes? When and why must we use them? My name is Ahmad Al-Fakharani and this is my channel. What do canary birds have to do with Kubernetes and application deployments? Well, the idea dates to the old days in the coal mines. Before entering a coal mine, workers needed to ensure no toxic gases were coming out. So they placed a canary bird at the entrance and waited. If the bird died, then the place was not safe enough. Otherwise, they could start working. Fortunately, those practices are long gone now. But in Kubernetes, we can use canary deployments the same way, only that this doesn't involve birds or animals. The idea is that when a new application is deployed, it's not spread out to all the pods at once. Instead, a small portion is selected to serve the new application version, while the rest of the pods continue to host the stable one. As a result, a small percentage of users are exposed to the new application version. Their feedback is carefully studied. If issues were detected or the users didn't like what they saw, rolling back is as easy as switching the canary pods to the stable version. The benefit here is that damage is minimal. Only a small subset of users will be affected by a faulty app version. On the other hand, if things go well, we will gradually increase the canary percentage while still collecting and examining users' feedback until 100% of the pods serve the new application version. In Kubernetes, we can implement canary deployments using a service or an ingress. With a service, we have two deployments, the stable and the canary. Both deployments have the same pod labels that the service is targeting. The trick here is the replica count. Given an application, my app with a stable version of 1.0.0, we introduce a new version, version 2.0.0, and we want to deploy it using the canary method. If the total number of replicas that we want to deploy is 10, for example, and our canary percentage is 10%, then we can set the replica count of the canary deployment to 1, while that of the stable is 9. Since the service routes traffic to pods in a round-robin fashion, 10% of the users will see version 2.0.0 of our application, and the rest will be routed to the stable version. As time passes, we can gradually increase the replica count of the canary while simultaneously decreasing the stable one till they are all shifted. Alternatively, we can roll back immediately by setting the replica count of the canary to 0 and the stable to 10. In a CI-CD pipeline, we can use Helm to apply canary deployments. We can have two deployment templates, the stable and the canary. We need to make sure that both have the same pod labels. Next, we must change the replica count variable to be specific to the stable or the canary, and we will place the default replica count variable in the values file with our stable and canary versions. We can set both to 1 since Helm will override them in the pipeline or set them to same defaults, like for example 9 to 1. It depends on your use case. In the pipeline deployment stage, we can set the replica count using the hyphen hyphen set replica count of the stable and the canary deployments. We can use a variable that can be manually fed to the pipeline by the user for more convenience. Now we can turn the knobs by setting the stable and the canary deployments up and down as accessory. So this is how we can apply canary deployments using a Kubernetes service. You can also do the same thing using an ingress. If your cluster has an ingress controller, you can use it to enable canary deployments as follows. Again, we have two deployments, the stable and the canary. They can have the same or different number of pods, it won't matter. The pod labels must differ since we will have two services, each targeting its respective deployment pods. Then we will have two ingress objects. Notice that this example assumes that we are using the Nginx ingress controller. However, other vendors also provide similar functionality. The first ingress object is the stable one, which targets the stable version. The second one is targeting the canary service. Yet it has a couple of annotations instructing the controller that this object serves a weighted portion of requests. Notice that both ingresses are accepting traffic at the same host. But the canary one has a weight annotation that defines the percentage of traffic that will be routed to the canary service. If you use Helm, the starter Helm chart created when we run the Helm create command already includes an ingress template. We can duplicate this template and append a descriptive string to their names to have stable and canary ingress objects. We must also change the target service to the stable and canary versions. Accordingly, we have to do the same thing to our service template, duplicate it, and change its name to reflect the deployment it manages. Finally, we apply the exact change to the deployment template itself. We'll also change the image name to be stable and canary. 
Once done, we must add the appropriate annotations to the canary ingress object and use a variable to define the needed traffic weight. In the values file, we define this variable. And we also define the stable and canary images. In the CI CD pipeline, we can run our Helm command while setting the stable and canary Docker images and the weight we want our canary version to receive. We can use an input variable for the image versions and the weight so that the user can supply them before starting the pipeline. So, in this video, we discussed canary deployments as a means of Kubernetes application distribution. Other advanced deployment methods like blue green, shadow, and feature gates exist, and we will be discussing them in other videos. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel to be notified of the latest DevOps and GitOps videos the moment they are published. You can also connect with me over LinkedIn or check my full courses on Udemy. My name is Ahmed Al Fakharani. Thanks for watching.